Thank you for joining us on another edition of our video broadcast. This one is awesome. Sugar addiction. I've got to put in here, I didn't put it on the board, but sugar, carb, refined, breads, all falling into the same category because the way the body and the brain interprets it, it's very much the same, by the way. See, sugar, a bagel, a piece of bread, can virtually be metabolized and converted and have a similar glycemic index or spike to your blood sugars just as much as Skittles or some other sugary snack. So I want to lump them all like sugar, Skittles, junk food, breads, white flowers into one category. Ultimately, the message is sugar because a lot of us just, we got to have sweet, right? So f understand, first of all, that palatable foods, fat, deep fried, sugars, and salt are the three biggies that are considered highly palatable foods that we just all love. <clears throat> I don't care who you are. You know, don't let a, a kid have some type of fat or fried food or sugary foods. Get them all like real foods. As long as you can keep them doing that, that's great. And as soon as they start getting a taste for the others, it's, down, it's downhill from there. Why? Because those are palatable foods. That's what our taste buds will, uh, will uh, acclimate to more quickly. We like the sensation. But then there's a deeper issue. There's blood sugar responses. And I'll explain how... It drives more tryptophan across the blood-brain barrier, sugar does, whether it's from carbs, bread, or from sugar alone. <clears throat> and when it does that, you get more of a serotonin response, a pleasurable response in the brain, um, hence driving you back to more. So I don't know, where, where do we get you to break the cycle? You know, how do I get you to break the cycle? I think we have some mechanisms, Daxitrol, um, Ultrachrome. Often we try to use a prep called ultra glucose control as a meal replacement because it has a blood sugar sustaining effect. So I'll talk about them at the end. Many of you need to stop cold turkey. You do. And get on, get on to even like a paleo, like all vegetables and lean protein, even reduce your carbs for a period of time. And the reason is sometimes you just need to go cold turkey. Others of you can do it, but you've got to wean away. I don't know what your specific issue is, but maybe understanding the mechanisms and what drives you is just as important. Number one, I already re uh, defined this, sugar and refined carbs, bagels, white breads, all in the same category as far as I'm concerned. Fats. I, I use the word palatable foods as salts, fats, and sugar, but um, we want to focus on sugar and carbs today. Fats. Um, you'll store more fat, <clears throat> your triglycerides will go up, your HDLs will go down, your p potential for insulin resistance and type 2 diabetes, obviously off the chart. The risks of depression and anxiety, pow. The more, but the more of this and these refined carbs that you consume, the refined carbohydrates, the breads, the whites, and those blood sugars spike... There's multiple layers to this. As they spike, they create uh, an insulin surge. That insulin then encourages weight gain and encourages insulin resistance. But also understand that there's a, a, a neurologically addictive mechanism too. Actually, the literature shows that just straight sugar, you can addict laboratory animals to sugar. And you can perpetuate and create the same response in those laboratory animals that you would get from cocaine <clears throat> or methamphetamine. They've proved it. They, it's proven. They pup chow to two different sets of Sprague Dolly rats. The one is laced with sugar. The other one is straight pup chow. And you do that for two weeks consecutively every day, each meal. And then you pull away the sugar from the pup chow. You give them straight pup chow. They find that the Sprague Dolly rats become more antagonistic, more violent, create, they're, they're, they're fighting, they're fighting with the other Sprague Dolly rats. Why? Because that pleasurable response, they have dopamine receptors and serotonin production just like we do. That pleasurable response in the brain is now gone. We also know that the sugar affects the striatal area of the brain. It, uh, it, 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 it encourages that similar affinity <clears throat> that you have with street drugs, cocaine and methamphetamine. It's been documented, it's proven. We want to go beyond that though, how do we help you? Emotional attachment, understand that many of us, we eat these things we, when we're happy. 
hey, things are good, I'm excited, let's go get ice cream, right? Um, I'm sad, go get me ice cream. Um, maybe I'm just lazy and tired, so I want something quick, so I'm just going to eat more fatty and more sugary foods because I'm basically lazy and it's quick and it fills me up quickly and I get a pleasurable response from it. Bad, again, emotional. <clears throat> Notice now I'm away from the biochemistry and the brain and what it does. Now I'm into the, you got to understand there's an emotional attachment. Many of us use it as a drug. <laughs> Oh, we don't want to hear that. I'm telling you that others have addictions to drugs and to alcohol and so on. And there are some of you that are viewing this right now. You're addicted to sugar like it's a drug. And it has, without getting into all the details of this and the striatal effect, it has those types of effects on us. Sugar. The more sugar I consume, the protein that I do break down... And what I extract from it, the tryptophan, crosses what's called the blood-brain barrier and gets into my brain much more efficiently, causing more serotonin production. Boom. I feel better. There's a dopamine response here, too. But I don't have time to get into that. It's a little more complicated. But understand the mechanism. The more of this junk that I consume, it's not like it's just the sugar itself. It's facilitating, it's transporting tryptophan across the blood-brain barrier. But what it does, it negates, unfortunately, the transference of other amino acids to make other neurotransmitters. It's very bizarre. That's why a lot of sugar is really bad for you. A lot of white, refined flours, really bad for you. <clears throat> fat storage. We increase our fat storage, and what we find is... I have pulled a study here that I've had for a few years back in 2010, the Journal of Neuroscience. Animal studies indicate that an intake of palatable, palatable foods downregulates certain receptors in the brain called D2 receptors, reduced sensitivity, <clears throat> decreased reward sensitivity. So here's what happens. Results indicate that a woman who gains weight over a six-month period eating bad foods has a decreased striatal response in her brain to these palatable foods. So in other words, the more you consume, the more fat that I accumulate, the more sugar and simple carbs that are getting through to the brain, crossing the blood-brain barrier, facilitating these pathways, it begins to change the striatal area, the lining in certain areas of the brain, and by so doing, it now begins to downregulate. So what I'm saying is that the more you consume, the less effect you get. Therefore, the more you start doubling down to get the same effect. <clears throat> Hence why folks that are significantly overweight many times have real problems with sugar. They virtually cannot break the cycle because they're needing, not only maybe are there emotional attachments and their, you know, their psychological issues, but now you've got to understand that <laughs> results indicate that the woman that gained significant weight over six month periods showed a reduction in the striatal response to palatable food consumption relative to weight stable women. Collectively, these results show that low sensitivity of the reward circuitry in the brain increases the risk for further future overeating. <clears throat> and that this overeating may further attenuate responsibility or res responsive responsitivity of the reward circuitry in a feed-forward process. It's a downward cycle. The more you consume, the more you will consume because I'm getting less response. It's ugly. It's an ugly pattern. What do we do? How do we get you through this? First of all, understanding that many of you have these, um, what I would call these addictions and, and understanding that there are emotional issues. Do you eat when you are sad and when you are down? When your boyfriend doesn't call you or your husband forgets to send you flowers for your anniversary, is that what you do? Do you eat? And do you go eat sugar? <clears throat> I, I think it's critical to understand um, I, I wanted to talk a little bit about dopamine and serotonin. Suffice it to say, there's a huge impact. I want to get over to what can we try to do. I think what you have to try to do 
is to understand that you've got to stabilize blood sugars, number one. I think how you stabilize blood sugars that you've got to begin to, to eat more protein and complex carbs through the course of the day. Steel cut oats, Ezekiel bread, <clears throat> vegetables, complex carbohydrates. There has to be protein. If you don't have protein at each meal, it's going to be a huge problem because you um, don't stabilize your blood sugars. You've got to have some source of fats, good fats, not deep fried. You've got to have olive oil. You've got to have nuts. You have to have some source of good fat. And this should be throughout the course of the day. There should be a breakfast. There should be a lunch. Make protein smoothies. I'm big on smoothies because of how it stabilizes your blood sugars. Ultra glucose control. Why? Because it helps to, it's documented to stabilize blood sugars. Why? Because it's a specific form of resistant starch. And it has a specific form of fiber that's slow release. Okay? So you stabilize blood sugars. The other area that I think can be helpful is to utilize ultra chrome. A specific form of chromium, 500 mics twice a day. Ooh, my goodness, that's a high dose. I've never heard of that. My doc said that's toxic. No, it's not. We use it up to 1,500 mics a day, right form. It's not toxic. Number three, <clears throat> I love a product known as Daxitrol because it has specific ingredients that help modulate serotonin, dopamine, and glutamate in the brain. Glutamate is excitatory, stimulatory, makes you agitated if you have too much of it. Dopamine, if you don't have enough, you have addictive, addictive type tendencies, gambling, etc., food addictions. We've got to try to raise the dopamine levels. Very excessive levels ride you in the other direction. And low serotonin. We, we've already, we'd already documented that many are getting that serotonin surge by consuming more carbs and sugars and crossing that blood-brain barrier. How do I eat? In other words, you eat preemptively. Well, I skip my lunch so that I can have whatever I want mid-afternoon and have a, a candy bar. That's a huge mistake. You need to drink an a ultra-glucose control shake, take, a, take two Daxitrol. Do not skip those meals. We don't understand. I'm trying to lose weight. No, what you're doing is you're starving yourself, and then you're rebounding, and you're eating all the wrong things. You get that pleasurable response. It's a continuum on the cycle. So I, I think some basic support mechanisms like ultra-chrome, Daxitrol, maybe ultra glucose control. These are tools. These are mechanisms. Are there other things that you can do to stabilize blood sugars like our berberine extracts? Well, clearly, there are multiple, multiple areas. But this is number one, use your basic dietary <coughs> components. Don't underestimate the small basic changes that you can make. Know that you have some nutrients that can help you and then ultimately dealing with what drives you. Facing up to the facts. Many of us eat when we're sad. We eat for enjoyment. As a, we, we, what do we do? Do we eat to live or do we live to eat? I think we have the two reversed at times. Sugar addictions. Huge problem. Many of you need to stop cold turkey. Others you need to begin to wean away. You need to find ways to not eat that. You don't, don't eat that bagel in the morning. Don't eat that muffin in the morning. Make a protein smoothie. Bring raw nuts. Bring hard-boiled eggs to work with you. Don't skip your lunch because you know you like that afternoon whatever. Don't skip your lunch because you know you eat a lot of junk food at night. Eat a piece of Ezekiel bread with almond butter on it with maybe some Dal 4 jelly, which adds no added sugars. It's just fruit sugar, period. The fruit and the natural sugars that come from, from the fruit. You say, well, isn't all sugar the same? That's still sugar. Don't, don't miss my point. I have a reason why I said Ezekiel bread stabilizes blood sugars because it's a low glycemic, unrefined, no refined components. It's all sprouted grains, higher in protein, higher in fiber. There's ways that you can begin to downregulate this brain response. But if you've been doing this for years, you're not going to do it overnight. And you can't be discouraged when it doesn't happen overnight. It'll be a process that you begin to change, change how the brain is working, change the striatal response. It's all good. It'll work to your good. 
Understand the mechanisms. It's there. You're not a bad person. You're not an evil person. Many of us just get trapped into these scenarios. Sugar addictions, you can break it. God bless you. Thanks for being with us. See you on the next video broadcast.